Hello friends, welcome to the course on C programming. This is the video on the introduction part. Before I start, let me tell you that the code which uh, we are going to see throughout the co course and all those uh, presentation PPTs, I put them over here in this on this link and this link has also been copied on the description part of this video so you can refer it later. Now this is the complete presentation outline of our C programming course and uh, in this video we will be taking the introductory part. Now before we start and start talking about C programming, let us first uh, spend a couple of uh, minutes in understanding the basic block diagram of computer. As we know that computer has got input device uh, wherein we read the numbers, wherein we read the data and the data is provided to the processing elements. So input devices could be keyboard, mouse, scanner, etc. And the processor, we call them normally CPU, Central Processing Unit. It is comprising of two different components, CU plus ALU. CU is control unit and ALU is arithmetic and logic unit. Now we'll not be going into the technical details of these two units right now, but basically CPU is a, a, a computing element that uh, processes our input data based on the instructions. Now processor has got one limitation it does not have enough memory to hold the data. For example if I want to add 100 numbers then processor does not have enough memory to hold 100 data. So for that processor needs a separate memory module. So we have a memory over here wherein we can have, uh, in fact memory is divided into two basic parts, primary memory, sometimes they call it main memory or volatile memory and the second part is secondary memory, sometimes they call it auxiliary memory or permanent memory. So primary memory or main memory we normally use RAM, random access memory, wherein while running the program the data is stored temporarily in primary memory. And secondary memory is a kind of memory where we store data permanently. For example, when we save our file, it goes in secondary memory. The example of secondary memory could be your hard disk. And at the end, once the data is processed, once you have your final result readily available, then it will be sent to an output device. So output device could be monitor, it could be printer or other. So this is the simple block diagram of computer. Now let us ask ourselves, why should I learn programming? It's, it's not about only C, it's about any programming languages. So what are those benefits do I get if I learn programming? So very first thing is computer can get my work done provided it is instructed to do so because we want the computer to do our work. So for that because computer is just a bad machine, uh, it does not understand our language so we need to tell them exactly what we want to do. So in that case, how do I talk to computer because computer doesn't understand my language. So in that case, we need to learn a programming language like C or C++ or Java, there are n number of different programming languages. So once we learn this kind of programming language, then we can talk to computer, then we can ask computer to do a specific task for me. And so what is a program then? So program is nothing but a set of instruction. For example, let's say I want to add two numbers. So how do I process that problem? For that, first thing is I read those two numbers. Then second thing is I would add those two numbers. And lastly, I would display the results. So these are the three instructions I would be specifying. And these three instructions combinedly will make a program that will get me addition of two numbers. And what is a software then? A software is nothing but a set of programs. For example, you want to develop a complete full-fledged ERP. So in an ERP, there'll be multiple programs together. So combining or collection of different programs would result into a software. Now let us talk about C programming in specific. So you can see this picture, he is Mr. Dennis Ritchie. He was a computer science scientist from US. He, along with Bell Laboratory, uh, developed C programming somewhere in uh, early 70s, uh, specifically between 1972 to 1973. 
Now, all these words that you see here, Oracle, you know, it's a database management system, MySQL is again open, RDBMS, then some of the core Android uh, library, we know Android is mobile operating system, then uh, embedded device drivers, then some web browsers, um, operating systems like Unix, GNU Linux, then many other programming languages like Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby. Uh, these are all kind of names which have C programming in their development, C pro, uh, language in their development. So C program or C programming language is used to develop all this stuff. So you can now understand the strength of C programming. Now you should ask yourself, why should I learn C programming? So the very first reason is because it is most widely used programming languages nowadays and it's been there it's been there for almost like last three four decades now the very second reason is uh, syntactical similarity of c programming with other programming languages such as c plus plus java c sharp javascript python etc so if you are aware of c programming language uh, you would find these languages to be uh, very easy to understand and the third reason is uh, if you are working with uh, embedded device driver if you are working with operating system if you are working with microcontrollers then I guess C is the most important language and the last reason is C is very easy to understand so these are few reasons why one should learn C programming now let us just take a quick look on how a uh, fast C program can be written. So we will start with a statement like hash include then in this bracket we have stdio.h. So let's start with this operator hash. Hash is called preprocessor directive operator. We will not go into the details right now but uh, for time being you can say that it's a syntax for including any header file you need to start writing the statement from hash then include is the keyword include is the syntax to include header file we have a header file dot h is h is an extension of header file we have a header file called stdio std stands for standard io stands for input output so this file contains some libraries some functions related to standard input and standard output what do we call standard input that's a keyboard keyboard is standard input for example and what do we call standard output let's say monitor so for example some functions related to keyboard some functions related to monitor they are included over here in standard input output dot h now why do i need to include this file because in my program i'll be reading something from keyboard i'll be printing something on monitor so for them I need to use some li library function so the, which are already available in this file so you can always include that file and start using those functions next step is void main now this is a function main is a function which will be called whenever the program is run so this is nothing but this cal two calibrations are nothing but the body of main so you can have n number of statements over here let's say there are 100 statements so whenever we run the program it starts with the very first statement of main and it will go till the end of the complete program so all those statements will be executed one by one uh, when we run the program now this main is a uh, it's a keyword means we cannot change the name now for timing we'll be forgetting this void because uh, in our uh, chapter function we'll be exploring uh, more about void right now we can take that as granted all right now let us continue let's say how do i mention a comment comment is mentioned with slack asterisk and between asterisk slash so what is a comment it is a non-executable line means it has nothing to do with your program logic though uh, it is just a simple statement that a programmer writes for his own sake for his own purpose for more readability so if you want to uh, add a comment line if you want to tell uh, someone or if you want to tell yourself what exactly the following code does then you can write in your own language and this is a 
again a non executable statement so you don't need to worry about this is just for the sake of your summary then let's say uh, i have used printf statement printf is nothing but you know we have seen that stdio o stands for output so this printf is something related to standard output that means monitor so anything that you write between these two bracket in double quote that will be printed on monitor for example you have written welcome to the course of c programming so this string will be printed on monitor then at the end we have slash n slash n means from this point it will take me to the next line so whatever i print next it will go to the next line for example the next statement is you'll have fun learning it so this will be printed in second line now you can see that uh, we have semicolon at the end of these two statements so semicolons are very important these are nothing but terminating indicators that this is the end of this statement this is end of this statement so after uh, the statements written over here in main will be specifying semicolon to indicate the end of the statement now when i run the program i'll be having these two lines as an output so first line would be welcome to the course of c programming so welcome to the course of c programming and then slash n means i'll be redirected to the next line and in next line you'll have a fun learning it so i'll have a this line as an output you'll have a fun learning it so before we conclude this pre uh, presentation uh, in fact uh, these are the two common uh, words that uh, we need to understand algorithm and flowchart of course these are not the definition standard definition you can always google the standard definition but this is just uh, an explanation what is algorithm it is nothing but set of steps to solve a given problem um, it could be written in any english type language there is no specific uh, uh, language there is no specific uh, context uh, uh, for writing an algorithm and what is flowchart flowchart is nothing but a graphical or pictorial uh, way of representing the algorithm so in our next video we'll be talking much uh, more about algorithm and flowchart we'll be formally defining them we'll be taking few examples of flowchart and algorithm and then uh, we'll be having some assignments too for you so with this let me conclude this video so friend thank you very much for watching this video uh, in next lecture as i said we'll be taking algorithms and uh, flowcharts so see you in next lecture until then enjoy c programming